Welcome to Feed That Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. Annie Laurie and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. On today's show, we're going to meet a professional actor and community activist and learn why she's an atheist and why she won FFRF's Nothing Fails Like Prayer Award. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers. We invite you to join us in our vital work to keep our secular government free from religious influence. Become a member at ffrf.org or ask for a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Freedom depends on free thinkers. Watch prior episodes of Free Thought Matters on FFRF's YouTube channel. Today on Free Thought Matters, we're going to talk about why the Freedom from Religion Foundation and some of its members ask to give secular invocations before governmental meetings to counter the practice of opening meetings with prayer. And we're going to meet one of the activists who has given secular invocations in Florida, Orlando-based actress and community activist Randa Black. Randa won the Freedom From Religion Foundation's Nothing Fails Like Prayer Award in 2021 for her excellent secular invocations before several Florida governmental bodies. Randa Black is an actress who worked for Nickelodeon Studios for eight years as a game show host in the live show Game Lab. And she appeared in featured roles on the network's sitcoms. She portrayed an FBI agent in The Cape, a drama series starring Corbin Bernson, and she has starred in Unsolved Mysteries and several episodic TV shows. She starred in the feature fiction Action in 2010. She's also appeared in hundreds of national and regional commercials and industrials for Toyota, Delta, AngelSoft, Kellogg's, Crispix, K Kmart, Burger King, Ford, and many others. In fact, let's take a look at some of her many roles. See, many of you brought Angel Soft. Is it really soft? Yep, see? Yes, it's very soft. Strong, too. Out of crisp bakes from Kellogg. You can't put the crisp out of crisp Yes, can I help you, gentlemen? Um, yes, we're here to see a Dr. Vermin. He's a hypnotist. Right. Here, fill this out, and then on the back, write down the problem that you're having and how you'd like the hypnotist to help you. Step out of the car. Put your hands in the air. With Nordic Track, I was able to increase my metabolism and burn calories faster. <laughs> okay, honey, we're going to have a wreck. Let's get in your car seat. We did it this morning, all with Soylite. But you're also a star in our eyes, Randa, for your secular activism and for being a lifetime member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Thanks for joining us today. It is completely my honor. I have much respect for both of you. So it looks like a lot of fun, Randa, doing those commercials mm -hmm. and TV roles. Is that, fun to, is that fun work? It is great. It's great working on the set with people and working with the same crew all the time and um, being surprised when you see the same people, and it's just like family. So, uh, well, speaking of family, I think freethinkers are kind of a family in the world, and mm -hmm. you came to our convention in Boston uh, last fall to talk not about your acting, but about your secular invocation. And we want to ask you, what is a secular invocation, why you give them, and, by the way, that prompted us to award you the Nothing Fails Like Prayer Award. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, you have a very interesting family background. 
with mm -hmm. access to abortion being such a crisis today. We were so impressed to learn that you have, in fact, in your family tree, an ancestor who was helping women like a century ago. Is that right? Right. My great-great-grandfather, Edwin Burdick, uh, he originally was a pharmacist. He became a doctor, and he worked in upstate Michigan in a rural community, farming community. And when women had eight kids or more and they couldn't feed the children they had, he would perform abortion services for them. And uh, it was needed at the time. This was like the end of the 1800s. Wow. And he never got into trouble? No. And no. this got passed down the, the family traditions, huh? Yes. It was... Um, it, we were all educated about it, and uh, my great grandmother was an educator and and uh, a civic organizer, and and it it generation after generation we've been civil rights activists. So it's in your genes, you could say. Yes. <laughs> so were yes. you raised in a religion, Rhonda? And if so, what happened? Yes, I was raised Catholic um, until confirmation, and my father was a. Uh, a priest who got my mother pregnant and had to leave the priesthood. No, no wait a um, minute. <laughs> that, that's not true. <laughs> Back up. I only qualify it. <laughs> yes. He, he was, he, my grandmother couldn't afford, he, she was a single mom, um, and she had four children. She couldn't afford the youngest two, so they were put in a Catholic um, home and orphanage, basically. And when he was in the eighth grade, they put him in a seminary. And so when he got out, he was 18 or 19. He took a leave of absence before he signed the document to become a priest. And in that time, he got my mother pregnant and left the priesthood. And, and married her. Yes, I married her. And uh -huh. so I was raised Catholic. He was, he was Catholic for a good amount of time. But he started listening to um, atheist Madeline O'Hare on the radio. And I remember watching him listen to her and um, really starting to disagree with things that insulted his intelligence um, regarding religion and all the indoctrination that he had. And that's um, a good way to put it. A lot of religious dogma does insult the intelligence. Yes, I have the same experience because when, when I listened to my dad with Madeleine O'Hare and arguing on the radio, um, I, I thought of atheism as angry with a capital A, and I didn't want to be that way. I didn't want to be angry all the time. So I kind of rebelled against that in a way, and um, I married a Christian man, and I got involved in the church, and I really tried to believe. Um, but of course, I got involved in Bible study and started actually reading the Bible, and then There's it, the mistake oh, right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We do want to, I mean, so you did become an atheist then. Uh, uh, I did. You had to think um, your way through it yourself, though. I did. And I just, um, I really tried, but I just couldn't buy into it. And I wanted to. I wanted to be one of the group, but now it, it just, um, I'm free of that. It was just in the past year or two that I actually started calling myself an atheist. Um, I always said I was agnostic, or, but I've, I've been atheist for a really long time. And now it's freedom. I, I, um, it's okay not to have all the answers. And I, um, I'm proud of the people that I'm meeting. And there's so many more atheists out there than I ever realized. So you've been working with the Florida... Central Florida Free Thought Society, mm -hmm. or whatever it's called. It's, a, is, chap it's a chapter of FFRF community. And, right. And have been giving a lot of invocations, and you yes. gave one which was the winning entry in our Nothing Feels Like Prayer contest, which, which got you to come to Boston and give it. But before we show your invocation, your secular invocation, can you explain what it is and, and, and why people are doing this? Yes. Well, in front of, uh, before uh, a lot of council, city council meetings and other meetings, they have an invocation or prayer. And so um, we noticed that a lot of them are, most of them are 95 or 99% Christian. 
And so we would go and advocate and ask our local cities if we could do a secular invocation because we wanted our voice to be heard as well. And some districts we've had some trouble getting in and, and, and had to kind of sue for the right to do that. And others we, we um, welcomed us. And so we've done maybe 161, that was as of November of last year. And so we've done maybe 180, 200 wow. already. And uh, it's great to have our voice heard too. Okay, but how can an atheist give a prayer? Well, it isn't a prayer. Well, <laughs> it, it's really not a prayer. It's a welcome to everybody in the community. That's how I look at it. Well, the word and, invocation doesn't have to mean religion. So we call right. it a secular invocation. Usually. Right, exactly. But it always has been in history as a prayer. And why? We need to have separation of church and state. And if we didn't know that then, we certainly know that now, that uh, it's really important to have separation of church and state. Even those who are religious should want to have separation of church and state. And, and we should government... say that there's a legal, also a legal reason why you could give that kind of invocation or atheist and agnostics can give an invocation because there was a bad decision by the Supreme Court, uh, town of Greece, that said it was acceptable in many cases for a governmental body, a legislative governmental body to open with uh, prayer, even if they were predominantly Christian. But there was this but in it that said, so long as minorities and even atheists are permitted to also do these opening remarks. So that's when we started the Nothing Feels Like Prayer Award. And we have your winning, uh, we have you giving your winning invocation. Um, you repeated it for us at our national convention last year, and let's show that. Good evening. I'm happy to be here tonight to give a secular invocation and words of encouragement and inspiration. It's an honor to be given a voice. I speak for those in the community who identify as being secular humanists, atheist, and one of the fastest growing groups in America, the non-religious. We are so fortunate to live in a country founded and formed to recognize the importance of the individual, where no one shall be made to hide nor justify their personal beliefs, and where no government shall impose a singular religion on its citizenry. Let us be mindful that this room is filled with our diverse human family with common values and needs. Let us cherish and celebrate our shared capacity for reason and compassion. Our similarities and our ability to recognize the value and worth of our entire community is what moves us forward. Now, instead of bowing our heads, Please lift them up. Look around you. Take a moment to look at your fellow citizens. Look past their age, their race, their gender, their sexual orientation, or any other arbitrary label. Look past their politics, or their beliefs, or religion. Every single person in this room has inherent and unquestionable value as a human being. The original motto of the United States of America was one of inclusion, e pluribus unum, which translates from many, one. It doesn't seek to exclude or extol any citizen for any reason. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for your continued efforts to make Longwood a great place to live. Please know that we don't take for granted your service to this community. Thank you. So that was great. So yeah. what was the reaction um, after you gave that invocation? Well, right before I gave it, um, there was a group of men on the side, and they were all huddled together like I was going to say 666 six, six, six over and over and over again. Um, mm. <laughs> but 
um, the reaction was um, they were nervous. They were nervous of having us there. But then they don't have invocations anymore. Um, uh. They don't want to give anybody a voice now because um, some of us that don't agree with them or with a particular religion um, are, are free to give an invocation. So they chose not to have them at all. Well, wow. and actually, that's the strategy behind the Nothing Feels Like Prayer Award because that's what we were hoping because we don't think there should be religion or really or irreligion at governmental meetings because it's divisive. So, so congratulations. Exactly. And why? Why can't we just start the meeting? If, a, if an individual um, council person wants to pray, if that's what they want to do before the meeting, let them do that backstage before they even come in. Um, I said backstage, but yeah. <laughs> behind yeah. the room. Let it be personal. If that's what they want to do, have at it. But uh, it sh we shouldn't be led in prayer our, our, in our city. So that, is, that was a victory, I guess, but it does show the kind of intolerance and hatred to those of us who are mm -hmm. outside the norm. We have to take a break, Randa, and when we come back, we want to ask uh, about how you became the center of a national public radio news story. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. I'm Doug Hinahara, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. I consider myself fortunate in that I wasn't raised in an overly religious family, so I was allowed to think for myself. And around the time I was 17, as I was exploring these ideas of religion, I was told by a fundamentalist Christian that my grandmother, who had emigrated from Japan, was destined to eternal damnation because she was a Buddhist. And I couldn't accept that, and it kind of unraveled from there for me. So at this point in my life, I've been become very comfortable with the idea that I don't need religion uh, or belief in God to be a moral person and live an ethical life. I'm proud of the fact that I have two daughters who have grown up to be wonderful young women, and I'm proud to say also atheist. We're talking with Randa Black, a professional actor and community activist in Orlando, Florida, who is an atheist. Randa, we want to ask you the question that atheists always get uh, the most from believers. How can you be a good person if you don't believe in a God? I don't really need a God to tell me to be nice to my neighbors. I don't need a God, um, lowercase g. I don't need a higher power to tell me to do a good thing. Um, I just do it naturally. Um, I, I don't need someone or another entity to tell me not to kill somebody. <laughs> That's just innate in who we are. And you are acting out those values. You were recently the subject of an NPR news story about how you're trying to help individuals in war-torn Ukraine. What are you doing there? Well, it was actually really simple. I, I run a VRBO, and I was looking to go on vacation, and I said, well, for my birthday, I'll go to Kiev, Ukraine. And I booked a hotel. Um, well, it was actually a, an Airbnb. I booked a short-term rental and in, in Kiev, and I wrote to the woman and just told her that I wasn't going to stay there, but I wanted her to receive the money because I know I wanted to help her in some way. And she wrote back and we had a dialogue back and forth. And I happened to put it on my Facebook just to in, 
encourage others to do it. And it went viral. It went everywhere. I had friends in Michigan, California, all my actor friends all over the country started buying up um, um, short-term rental units in Poland as well um, so Wait, that they would have somewhere to go. So you're saying that when they bought it in Poland, the, Im the immigrants uh, coming into Poland could actually stay in these places? Right. It helped, it helped the people who um, live there um, make some money so that the other people would have some place to go to. And they wouldn't lose funds bringing in all these people. It was a win-win. It helped everybody. Well, you probably, and then it caught on. Other you, people started doing it. You probably also know that the atheists in Poland are doing that very thing. They're helping accommodate these uh, refugees coming across the border. Yes, I'm very active. We, I belong to the Central Florida Free Thought community, and we volunteer. We clean up roads. We, we work at food pantries. We, we help in a lot of other areas. Um, we're always there for the community. We do good things all the time, so just that, for goodness sake. Yeah, for goodness mm -hmm. sake. So that gets back right. to that question of uh, this, this, I think it's really a stumbling block or a, a notion that holds us back that we need this authoritarian figure, mm -hmm. patriarchal figure in the sky dictating to us what to do when uh, we can figure it out for ourselves. And uh, mm -hmm. it isn't because, doing something isn't good just because it's godly, it should have good consequences. Yeah. Yes, and it's actually always also very selfish. In other words, I want to live in a great community. I want to live with educated people, with people who are doing well. I want to serve my community. It only serves me. It serves all of us. So if we all help each other, we're all stronger for it. And it's kind of a pessimistic view of human nature to think, I don't really want to be a good person, but this God's making me do it. He's going to threaten me if I don't. I mean, that's kind of a put down of who we are as, as charitable human beings. You've also been charitable helping immigrants from Afghanistan. Is that right? Yes, I have um, immigrants right now living with me in my house. Yes. Wow. And they're amazing people. And I got to tell you, I was actually nervous at first because for all the things that I heard about how they might not like women or, or be whatever the stereotypes of what a Muslim person would be. And it was interesting to me, they're not very religious. <laughs> they are so open-minded and awesome. And we are family already. Um, I, I just, it's one of the best things I've ever done. Do you it's have a, a whole family living with you? I do not. I have um, men who worked alongside of our men and women in service. They helped get them out when Kabul fell. Uh, unfortunately, they had to leave their families behind. So um, their families are in grave danger right now. The Taliban is actively going and knocking on doors, searching for their families. So um, it, I don't want to talk too much about it, only because I, I want to let their identity be, you know, um, safe so that their family stays safe. We're hoping to get them here sooner than later, but it's just a long process. Well, that's a very wonderful thing that you're doing, and I do know other atheists out there in the United States who are also working with many of the Afghan refugees. So it isn't just religion that can be charitable. Um, as you prove. Right. I don't care if someone is religious or not. I care about their humanity. I care about part of this whole thing with the freedom to have your own mind and to think for yourself is I want others to be able to do the same thing. And when one of the gentlemen got off the plane, he was holding an American flag and he went, I'm finally free. Huh. Well, congratulations for all of that. So we saw your wonderful invocation. And uh, ex explain to some of our viewers who might want to do something like that themselves. How can someone get involved in doing a secular invocation? It's really easy. Just contact your city hall and be really nice about it. Um, don't be angry. Just go in there and just we'd like to do a secular invocation to represent our voice and others in the community and and reassure them it'll be very positive and uplifting. And if you'll notice my invocation, it included everybody in the community, religious or not. 
Democrat, Republican or not, whatever you choose to be, it included everybody. And that's what our government should be about. Rhonda, where was that invocation given where after you gave it, they stopped doing them all together? That was in, in Longwood, the city of Longwood. Longwood. I've done I've done it in Maitland, um, and Maitland's always been wonderful having us back. And I don't know that they're going to be doing it anymore either. <laughs> um, I think I recently heard they're not going to be doing it anymore. But, but um, they were very welcoming. Mo most cities are very welcoming. And once we get in and they see what they're doing, but it's really easy to go, and it's only a few minutes of your time. And so. I suppose some of them are still remote. But um, we would like to tell any viewer out there that wants to do this, who knows that there are Christian parents, for example, happening to open their city council or county board, if, if they're allowing rotating rosters of um, pastors or other citizens to give these invocations under the Greece decision, you have the right to be included as well. And if they won't let you do it, you should let the Freedom From Religion Foundation know. Um, we have a, a website where you can report violations, and we can work with you and with that community to stop that. And as you pointed out, Rhonda, we did have to take a uh, lawsuit in, uh, in Brevard County, Florida, with the help of the chapter and other plaintiffs, and we did win. Yeah. So um, there is good precedent there. So um, any other parting words for someone who uh, wonders, you know, is it safe to come out of the closet? As an atheist, what would you say? I, I wondered about that too, but I feel completely safe. I live in a free country and we need to speak up. And I've never felt unsafe doing it. It's so easy to do. It's, it's welcoming everybody in your community. In fact, it's the best way to start with your local cities. I think that's the way to get in and, and move forward so that we really need separation of church and state. And a great place to start is in your local community. Well, thank you, Randa Black, for joining us today. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because free thought matters. I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.